Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to return to the end and respawn the dragon. And there's a good reason for that. It's because I need a few more shulker boxes. Now we've got a handful of shulker shells in here. We don't quite have enough to make six <laughs> shulker boxes because I've only got 11 shells. So be able to make five more shulker boxes with that. But I think we're going to spend a bit of time organizing inventory and getting a few more shulker boxes that we can use just for whatever tasks we want to. Because right now, I'm starting to fill these ones in the ender chest up with various bits and pieces. And I want the ender chest to be a more organized inventory of stuff that I can pull out at will for whatever projects I want. We can have a box that's dedicated to redstone. We're kind of working on that already. But we can also have one that's got like backup tools and the armor and the kind of stuff that I'm storing in here right now because they don't really have a predetermined spot for them. I also want to have a few different boxes of different resources. I want one for firework rockets. I want one for moss if we want to spread some of that around. You know, that kind of thing. And so what I'm going to do is head back to the end, respawn the dragon, seeing as we haven't really covered how to do that yet, and then we'll go out to the end cities once again looking for shulkers that we can grab and create a few more shulker boxes. Once you're pretty well established in a world and you've beaten the dragon for the first time, respawning it is actually a relatively straightforward affair. All we need to do is grab some ender pearls, which we will get from killing endermen, and you can very easily acquire them from the end once you've beaten the dragon for the first time, but we'll need to turn the ender pearls into eyes of ender. And we'll also need to acquire some ghast tears, which I have enough of from just killing a few ghasts on the trips around the nether that we were doing in yesterday's video where we were raiding a bunch of bastions in order to get stuff from the piglins. And last of all, we will need some blocks of glass because if we combine all of these, if you put the eye of ender in the center, the ghast tears somewhere around there and all of the glass around it. And that's where we combine all of these ingredients. If you put the eye of ender in the center, the ghast tier below it and some glass all the way around the outside, we get an end crystal of our very own. We can actually <laughs> take an end crystal with us and replace it in the end. Now, one word of warning before we do any of this, end crystals are incredibly volatile and you can't just place them on any old block. They can only be placed on top of obsidian or bedrock. So bedrock down at the very bottom of the world or in the nether or the bedrock portal in the end that returns you to the overworld once you've beaten the dragon. That is where we're going to be placing these. If you want to place them elsewhere, they can be placed on top of obsidian blocks, but this should be done with extreme caution because now this thing is incredibly volatile. If it gets attacked with even as much as a left click punch, or if you shoot it with an arrow like so, it will explode quite violently with the same amount of explosion as a charged creeper gives at point blank range. And anybody who's fought the dragon and exploded one of the end crystals on the obsidian pillars up close will know how devastating these explosions can be. And so unless you've got full protection netherite gear on, it's unlikely that you're gonna survive a point blank end crystal blast. With that said, you might've noticed that nothing ended up getting destroyed from the terrain over there on that beach. Well, that's not because the end crystals explosion doesn't damage blocks, it's because it was placed on top of a block of obsidian. If we place an end crystal up here now, the obsidian is going to block any of the explosion damage from affecting blocks directly below it. But if there was stuff built up around the sides above the level of this obsidian block, then the end crystal would damage those blocks. They would probably break and they might even be destroyed. Once you've placed an end crystal on an obsidian block, very carefully it is possible to mine out the obsidian block underneath it, at which point blowing up the end crystal will destroy all of the blocks underneath it. Obsidian is very good at blocking explosion damage. But where we're going, we won't really need the obsidian. We're going to put that back in the shulker box, probably store this back in the ender chest, and then we're going to hop on through to the nether and acquire ourselves a couple of blaze rods. I am once again reminded of how lucky I am to have a nether fortress this close to my portal. And there we go, we've got three blaze rods. That's really all we need for this adventure. We can even use the crafting table that I stashed here by this portal. We're going to throw a couple of blaze powder powder together with the ender pearls to make some eyes of ender. We're going to turn that into four end crystals, and I guess I will need a bit more glass for this. So with one more glass tier and seven more glass, we have four end crystals, and that should be enough to resummon the dragon. In fact, I believe it can be done with fewer end crystals than that, but that creates some weird issues that I think four is probably the standard intended way of resummoning the dragon. We'll put the remaining blaze rod and glass tier in there since they're used for potion brewing, and let's head on back to the stronghold, if I can remember which way that is. I think it's this way. 
<laughs> to be honest, my nether hub still needs a bit more organization. Oh yes, oh yes, I remember now. It's this one out here on the bridge above the lava lake. Well, we're going to step on through the portal before anything decides to kill me. And there we go. We find ourselves sitting in the fountain here at the portal room and through this door is our end portal. Perfect. Well, there's no time like the present. There's a piglin in here apparently. Do you want to go to the end, buddy? Uh, he's taking a lava bath. He's, he's in the hot tub. We'll be, we'll be fine without him. Let's go on through to the end. Welcome back to the end dimension. So you'll notice that we're a little bit less prepared for this dragon fight, but we have one significant advantage. We have Elytra now, and it's going to be possible to fly around the arena attacking the dragon and staying much more maneuverable in the air, even when the dragon knocks us up into the air if it ends up attacking us. The endermen are probably still the most significant challenge of all of this, but at least we have the opportunity to fly away if we end up aggroing one of them. And you'll notice that I've already taken a lot of obsidian down from one of these pillars. You might have <laughs> recognized that that's all of the obsidian that's in the shulker box in my ender chest. All I'm going to grab from here right now is a bunch of firework rockets, so we can make sure we stay in the air without having to sit down, open up our ender chest and grab some more firework rockets while we're fighting the dragon. Now we're going to place the four end crystals on the central parts of these long sections of bedrock here. We're going to put one here, we're going to put one there, we're going to put one here and the last one is going to go on this side here and once that happens the dragon's respawn sequence begins and it's impossible for you to return through the central portal back to the overworld. All of the towers around the outside rebuild themselves, including the iron bars of the cages and the blocks of obsidian that comprise the towers themselves. And all of these explosions are happening for real, so it's probably better if you don't end up getting too close to any of the end crystals while they're doing their thing. Finally, all the end crystals around the bedrock portal will explode, and the dragon is respawned, and we get the end again advancement for resummoning the dragon. Now, of course, we have a slightly easier time taking out these end crystals because we can fly up into the air, shoot at them from a distance, and as long as our aim is good enough, we can take out a whole bunch of them. The dragon will still try and target the player, but it's going to have a harder time hitting you if you're as maneuverable as it is. And it's even possible, although a little bit tricky, to shoot an arrow down through the tops of the iron bars where there is a bit of a gap and take out the end crystals from above instead of from below. I'm still probably going to hit this one from below because sometimes the angle is just a little bit easier. There we go. And now all of the end crystals are down in record time too. And it looks like none of the endermen have decided to attack me. I haven't looked at any of them by mistake. I haven't brought any of the glass bottles to get rid of the dragon's breath this time around. So we're not going to bottle up any more dragon's breath for now but we are going to just take out the dragon at our leisure at this stage. We can even fly around after the dragon, chasing it down, firing arrows at it if we want to, but the dragon's flight patterns are a little bit unpredictable sometimes, so it's often a little bit easier said than done. Of course, there's also the option of standing on top of one of the end pillars and waiting for the dragon to come in towards the center so that you can take a few easy pot shots as it makes its way down to perch on the portal, from which point it's just the same as the dragon fight was before. It'll repel arrows at this stage, so we can and swoop in underneath, stand on the portal itself here, and attack the head from below. Even when the dragon knocks you up into the air like it just did, we have a nice easy way of floating around with Elytra, and it's much less of a calamity the way it was before. I think that may have happened because I aggroed an Enderman in the area as well, so I'm going to keep an eye out for, yep, there's one guy down there who is especially mad at me. A couple more easy pot shots, and we might as well head back down to ground level to take out that Enderman before the Enderman situation gets any worse. Looks like the dragon is on its way off as well, so let's see if we can land over here. The Enderman's just going to run towards me, and... And I'll try and take him out without getting hit by the dragon in the process. There we go, got a couple of extra ender pearls for our trouble, and let's get back into the air, face down the dragon in its natural habitat, and hope that it doesn't swell back around to face us. There we go. One last thing we can do, since I didn't get the chance to do this advancement last time, but I have brought my spyglass with me this time, is wait for the dragon to re-emerge from wherever it's flying around, and take a look at it with the spyglass, if I could even spot where it is at that point. There we go! Is it a plane? No, it's the Ender Dragon, and we're about to take it down for the second time. Down onto the portal perch it goes, we're gonna sweep on under here and attack the underside with the sword just a few more times. That is our second dragon fight complete. We have freed the end once again. 
And this time you'll notice that the dragon drops a great deal less XP. I'm still going to run around and pick it up because free XP is worth having, but it's all going to mending my equipment right now, and even if I leave the equipment out of my hands, it's still only going to drop about 500 XP, which is pretty decent as far as mobs go. Typically, the average mob doesn't drop a whole bunch, but it's not going to be enough to take you all the way up to levels in the 70s at this point. I've only ended up getting seven levels. I fully repaired my Silk Touch pickaxe, which is nice. And you'll also notice there is no new dragon egg here on top of the portal. Now, I believe that's a difference from Bedrock Edition. I believe every time Bedrock Edition players fight the dragon, there is a new dragon egg here, but unfortunately on Java Edition, that is not the case. There is only ever one dragon egg and you get it from the first fight. One thing you do get from subsequent dragon fights, though, is another end gateway. You'll notice that the gateway over there with the dirt pillar going up to it is... Oh, no, it's a wooden pillar. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, it's the one which we have visited before, whereas this one over here is completely fresh and new, and it even leads off in a different direction when we go through it out to the Outer End Islands. This time we can do that in style because we have firework rockets and ender pearls at our disposal, so I think we're probably just going to fly on straight through this and over to the other island. It took a second for the game to register that we were doing that there, but now we find ourselves in a completely different area of the Outer End Islands. It's not a fresh new dimension or anything. If we flew around these outer islands in a circle, we might still find the end cities that we first visited when we came here, but this at least gives us an opportunity to branch out in a different direction and explore to find end cities we may not have discovered yet. This is a bit of a rough spawn, to be honest. I'm very glad that this wasn't my first spawn because we'd be taking apart a whole chunk of this floating island just so we could get over to the nearest available landmass. But of course, we brought ourselves some firework rockets and we've got the ender chest with a few more rockets in here as well. I might actually swap my gold helmet out now that I think about it because we are no longer in the nether. Let's give ourselves the best chance of protection as we go and raid a couple more end cities. Naturally, flying around these end islands with our elytra is going to be a much more comfortable way of exploring looking for end cities. It's going to be a little faster than going around on the ground and bridging everywhere. It may just help us to keep a track of where exactly we have been so that we don't end up revisiting the same end cities multiple times. And if we end up running out of durability with our elytra, we need to make sure we're not over the void when we do that, of course. But it's simple enough to land, make yourself a quick shelter, and attack a few endermen to regain a bit more XP. Usually when I'm exploring for end cities, I pick a compass point direction. I pick basically whichever direction that the gateway from the central island was pointing us, and I travel that way a few thousand blocks or so. Right now we're about, yeah, three and a half thousand blocks out east. I'm going to continue in this direction until I find an end city, maybe kind of weaving back and forth, and I think I might do what I did last time and up my render distance to about 24 chunks, which might make performance a little bit chuggy here and there, but with only a couple of blocks and plants to render, I think it should give us a better chance at spotting end cities from a distance as we explore here. I'm certainly finding a good number of these end return gateways, which is nice. Always good to know where those are if we end up going thousands of blocks away from the central ring. And right here, we have we have dueling end cities, in fact, and we have two separate end cities with ships. This is fantastic. We get ourselves two more elytra from this, and we also get the opportunity to scavenge these massive cities for all of the shulkers they will contain. Remember, those large, tall towers are going to have a bunch of shulkers up the center. We might as well take on the boats first though, so let's land down here on the back. I'm going to ignore the brewing stand in here for now, we don't really need the brewing stand at this stage, we just need to take out the shulkers who are inside and claim our second set of elytra. I'm also going to check out what's in the chests, because I always like to. Blast protection 3 chest plate, hmm, not bad, and a little bit of iron and gold, pretty standard stuff really. One shulker shell to our name so far, although of course there is another shulker back here, and it sounds like another one has joined us. I'm not certain exactly where that one is though. Oh, he's behind us. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of unusual. It seems to have warped in from the outside. Well, once it's open, yeah, I ended up teleporting it somewhere else. I ended up hitting it with an arrow and it wasn't too happy with that. Ah, back on the outside, are you? Take that. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, uh, once I come back down again, which might take a minute here, but I'm going to cling to the mast, I can grab this and it seems like we may even have another shulker attached to the back or maybe one of the sides of the boat here? Nope, it's underneath. <laughs> it's underneath the ship. Well, there we go. We took that one out and it dropped a shulker shell, which has probably fallen into the void. <laughs> we might go and check for that one in a second. Yeah, it seems pretty unlikely based on the placement of all of this that the shulker shell didn't go into the void, but we'll swoop on down here and take a look nonetheless. Oh, it's right there on the edge. Oh my gosh, we're so lucky that that one didn't go in there. Obviously, there's plenty of ways of getting shulker shells and it's even possible 
to farm shulkers much later on. We'll probably end up making a farm design for that, but I'm glad that in the meantime we got ourselves another shell and another set of elytra too. I'm going to whip up another quick chest so that we can stash all of this stuff in a shulker box of its own. But in the meantime, of course, we don't want to go without the dragon head. So I'm going to hop on over here. We're just going to place a block underneath this. We can just about stand on top of the dragon head to place a block underneath it. It always feels very precarious doing this. But there we go. We have acquired the dragon head. And I usually like to break out a few extra blocks of the ship here just to make sure that it's obvious we have raided this one in the past if we return to this part of the end in future. Well, we have a couple of chests down here, but I've neglected to bring a crafting table with me. So I don't think there's any way we can get a crafting table out here in the end. I'm probably just going to have to make use of the shulker boxes I already have, which is fine. We don't have a great deal of stuff going on in these anyway. I've started a stack of shulker shells here in the ender chest already, but we're going to keep these separate just to keep track of how many of those we ended up getting. And the rest of the end blocks and purple and miscellaneous things and the elytra and the dragon heads, I guess, can go in one of these other boxes in the meantime. While we're at it, uh, following on from what we were doing yesterday, I might as well make note of the fact that the compass and the lodestone compass are spinning randomly here in the end as they did in the nether because frankly yeah there's no way of them pointing towards destinations in the overworld when we're here in this dimension either so it pretty much makes sense that they're not going to work. Right over to the other end city and I think this time we're going to be raiding this one from the top down so we're going to get to fire downwards on all of these shulkers and collect all of the shulker shells they drop as they fall to the floor. Let's quickly check these chests we've got oh some nice diamond gear in here might as well grab that and take that with us and a diamond sword with sharpness three not as good as the one we found in the Bastion the other day, and cities you're slacking. Naturally, at this point, it is best to attack the Shulkers with our Looting Sword, since that'll give them the best chances of dropping a Shulker Shell. And in days gone by, it was possible to get a cheeky looting effect from a ranged attack by using a bow from your offhand while holding a sword in your main hand. And I don't know if that is still true, but I'm going to try it down here just because it makes shooting these Shulkers easier. And like I said, we can always end up farming Shulker Shells in future, so we don't have to worry about getting 100% of the drops from these guys. If you want to sneaky preview of the mechanics we're actually going to be using to farm shulkers, then look no further than what we're seeing from some of the shulkers around here, because there are a lot more on the outside of this tower than there were previously, despite the fact that we've just looted a bunch of shulkers from the inside. Every so often, if a shulker hits another shulker with a bullet, or if a shulker hits itself with its own bullet, you'll notice that the shulker seems to teleport away while staying exactly where it is. I might have caught a couple of them doing that in the melee down here whilst I was taking out some of the shulkers and I'll try and show those in the video if I do have them. But what we can see happening when we do that is effectively the shulkers cloning themselves. When a shulker bullet hits a shulker it has a small chance of reproducing the shulker and duplicating it. And I haven't looked into these mechanics in full yet, but I believe the likelihood gets higher if there aren't that many other shulkers around, meaning if one shulker hits itself with its own bullets, it ends up duplicating itself pretty reliably. Two diamond shovels in this one, both efficiency four, and a diamond helmet. All right, not too bad. We'll take the emerald and the iron as well. But from all those extra shulkers, we're getting a decent number of shells, which is very nice. Happy to have them. But despite the fact that they teleport around everywhere, it is going to be possible for us to capture a shulker, take it back to the overworld or wherever we want to take it really, and use it to reproduce a bunch of other shulkers that we can farm for shulker shells. So we'll end up doing that at a later date. It's a little bit technical for our current stage in the game though. Uh, one thing I hadn't considered about this trip being a little bit less prepared is that I need enough wood to recraft a shield. I don't think I can repair a shield with iron. I think it has to be repaired with wood. So there's no chance even of me making an anvil while we're out here. Without wood, I am pretty much stuck. Which is probably a pretty good case for me putting unbreaking and mending on the shield one of these days because yeah, it has six durability left. I think we are probably not going to last all that much longer. But with 20 shulker shells under our belt right now, that is 10 more shulker boxes, not to mention the fact that we have 11 in here. We're up to about 15 and we are close to filling up at least the first two rows of this ender chest with shulker boxes if we wanted to. So I think that might be enough for now. I think the last port of call is going to be that other end city ship on the other side so that we can get hold of another set of elytra just as a backup and then I think we might make our way back to the overworld we're not going to go on a huge end raiding session unless we are well equipped to do the job so we're going to make a beeline over to this ship which is hovering even further over the void than that other one was we're going to swing on down here and grab another couple of shulker shells and our third set of elytra oh a couple of diamonds in the chest from this one as well and some more gold along with a couple of relatively useless helmets get rid of these guys while we still can no shulker shells from that one 
hopefully we'll get one from the guy who's teleported over here. Yes, we got a couple of shells from the ones on the back, and we immediately get hit with levitation. All right. One more dragon head perilously over the void here, but I think we should be able to pop a block under it like that, and we can step down on top of the block that we just placed. Perfect. One more dragon head for us as well. That's one more Shelka shell to add to our collection, and I think I'll probably go and get just one more so that we can make the amount that's in our ender chest out to an even number. While also checking out what's in these chests, because I'm curious. Gold and an efficiency 5 diamond shovel. That's, hey, not too bad. There goes my shield. All right. Well, we're pretty badly defended at this point, so I think I'll probably take out one of these Shulkas who seems like easy pickings, and... Grab one more shell and we'll head out from here. Not too bad, not too shabby. There we go, 12 Shulker shells in there. So that's another six and we've got 22 in there for 11 more. Pretty good. Luckily for me, there is also an Ender Return gateway very close by, so I'll take the coordinates of these cities because we might come back here in future to continue raiding them. But as it is right now, we can just hop on through here, <laughs> use the elytra to duck under the blocks, and we're back here at the central island. So now we have two end gateways, one headed out that way, one headed out this way, and this one is more or less directly east, although I think it's a little bit off-center because the center is always that zero line that goes through the bedrock portal in the middle, so that one is actually just ever so slightly south of east. And the cool thing is, the more you fight the Ender Dragon, the more you respawn and destroy the Ender Dragon, more of these gateways will start to appear around this island to a maximum of 20. 20 total end gateways will generate in a ring all the way around the outer loop of these islands beyond the obsidian pillars, and that will basically form a network of gateways that you can use to get more or less anywhere in the outer end islands, provided that you start on the inside of that central ring. At some point in the future, I would like to do something that we did in the previous season of Survival Guide, where we kind of manipulate the position of these gateways as they generate out into the void so that we can build some custom stuff out there without any other blocks around. But we're going to do that in another episode. I don't really feel like doing that now. Most of the point of this episode was being able to respawn the dragon, fight it one more time, and head out to the end cities for a few more shulker boxes. We're going to stash some more of this end city loot over here in the storage system. We're going to put the diamonds and gold and whatnot where they all belong. And now we have two more sets of elytra, which at our first opportunity, I'm going to enchant with unbreaking and mending so they can be useful backup elytra for if we end up losing one of these. And I think now seems like a better time than any to instate a kind of backup gear shulker box in our ender chest. That way, as long as we have an ender chest around, we can get hold of it from basically anywhere, and we can resupply with some backup gear in the eventuality that we lose some of the equipment we're working with now. With 22 shulker shells claimed from those end cities, I'm going to combine those in there so we have a decent handful left over, and I'll introduce you finally to one of the most useful things about shulker boxes. You can dye them different colours. <laughs> All 16 colors, including purple, are valid dyes for shulker boxes, so despite the fact that they have this pale purple look to them the rest of the time, it is possible to dye them a more solid, deeper purple as well. I'm going to use red dye to color the box that I've been using for redstone components already, because that one seems pretty obvious, and for one of the other shulker boxes that's going to be our backup gear box, I think a light blue makes sense, considering that's probably the dye color closest to diamonds. I tried cyan, it didn't look all that great. And with a few XP levels, we can even rename the in an anvil. So if we type redstone for this one, that can be our redstone box. We can name this one backup gear, and that way, whenever it's in our inventory, we'll know that this is the backup gear shulker box. The redstone box contains all of the redstone components that we've thrown in here so far, along with a bit of glow lichen and some bits and pieces from the glow lichen farm episode. This backup gear shulker box can now contain some of our elytra, maybe a couple of these spare diamond tools and diamond armor. It could even have the diamond chest plate and a few of the other bits and pieces that we've got going on in here. The two hoes that I've got here aren't necessarily backups, but it's going to be a gear and tools chest as it is. We could probably even throw in some of the golden carrots that I've been keeping on me as food supply as well. A water bucket, the enchanted shears that we made, flint and steel. There's a bunch of useful stuff that we could end up putting in this shulker box. And those can tuck away into the ender chest here and give ourselves a lot more space to work with. We'll find places for all of this stuff as well, maybe some kind of like loot box that we can throw in some of the more rare loot that we find. I've got my box of fireworks here as well, which is also stashing some golden carrots in, so I might end up moving some of
some of those, maybe to a dedicated food box at some stage. But either way, I'm going to make myself some grey dye here so that we can dye this shulker box grey, as in gunpowder grey, for the fireworks. And at last, we have a dedicated grey fireworks box, and all of that can go in here to help organise our ender chest. Our dedicated ender chest shulker boxes can stay in there, and honestly, that will stop me just filling them up with junk like all of the coral and stuff that was in my shulker box while I was raiding the end city earlier in this episode. I think in a future episode we'll go over all of the stuff that we could store in our ender chest for every eventuality and we'll probably stick with a format like that from then onwards. But I like having a couple of empty shulker boxes in here for now since I'm going to be doing a lot of resource gathering over the next little while. I want to grab a bunch of sand so that we can use that to make TNT and concrete powder and a bunch of other things so we're probably going to be going and gathering those on mining live streams and stuff like that. So it's nice to have a few shulker boxes ready for that and in the meantime that's where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Folks, good luck respawning the dragon, taking it on, and going and finding some more end cities. I hope you have good luck and find a bunch of extra elytra for yourselves. My name has been Pixorifs. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.